Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Sweet Combat Season 1, Episode 20. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So picking up where the last episode left off, it wasn't just Xiao Mi and the... Uh, entire uh, Taekwondo club that shows up. We have Hal, and he brings a whole crowd with him as well, and everyone's really, like, diving into this, and I love that Queen's kind of being like, Yanan, what are you doing? Don't you think you're going too far? It's like, right, if you don't do this, you might as well, like, basically hit his wallet hard and fast, and that's the only way you're going to really, like, really strike him, and I know she's like, everyone, give it up to uh, Wang, 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 because she didn't know his name, and then Queen had to be like, Wang Shi, uh, Wang Shi uh, Wei, and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, Wang Shi Wei, or, or something like that, and I'm like, I love that, it felt so, it's just like, and just, Queen just being like, ah, but ultimately, she, um, like everyone enjoyed the meal, and obviously it took a heavy chunk out of his wallet, it is kind of still sad that Tian never showed up, I mean, it makes sense why he wouldn't, but Queen is thinking about it, because she's like, yeah, when we left, like, Tian had this look on his face, like he wasn't himself, she was like, oh, he was pissed, and I, obviously, like, Yanan's like, I didn't notice that. It's like, well, to be fair, like, Shi Wei, like, uh, Tian poured wine on him by accident. I mean, like, I know it wasn't by accident. It was on purpose and got fired. And Yanan's like, why the hell didn't you tell me something like that? She's like, I didn't think it was that important. But it's like, it is. Because also, like, it made you realize, like, once again, she noticed at the time he did it on purpose. But I guess she didn't correlate it to these circumstances that, like, her leaving with uh, Shi Wei would, like, be an issue. But, it, it, and once again, she was just caught up in the, oh my god, I gotta do this thing because my grandfather wants me to, and yada, yada, yada. Like, she's got so much other stuff on her mind. She didn't want to go out with him. She gave him this whole challenge, hoping that he would be able to accomplish it. It's just like, she wanted to ignore him, but he was literally outside of waiting for her. So, it just all kind of happened, especially because Yanan kind of sweeps her up and is like, oh, let's go. So, um, but now it's like, okay, so what do we do about this situation? And it's like... You know, Queen's like, should I just, like, ask him, like, if he's bothered or something? Like, what, what should I do? And Yanan's like, well, this could work to your benefit because maybe, like, Tien's, like, so upset because he is a little jealous. Like, if he's pouting about it, that's a good thing. Or he could view you as a bad friend. Those are the options. But in the end, it's kind of like, this could push him to actually admit that he likes you it's like yeah show him that he's not the only one being chased by a whole bunch of girls that hey you've got some male suitors attention as well which you know queen's kind of trying to hide the fact that she's kind of happy about that notion of like oh this might be the nudge tian needs to potentially say that he likes me okay but she's trying to be like no it's fine but like the notion that yanan presented kind of makes her smile sadly so because i thought tian knew like right that like oh this is the guy that your her grandfather's trying to hook her up with he, he kind of know i don't think he like he was nearby sure but he wasn't paying attention to the conversation they're, they're not talking loud enough for him to probably have heard that so he doesn't know that part of he just knows like right this is someone that's kind of a suitor but like he doesn't know the intricacies of like the dynamic of like it's a family relationship thing kind of it's networking kind of putting these two families together so I thought he knew that, but he doesn't. In fact, Zhao Mi kind of picked up on it. How didn't, because Hao's like, wait, there's no way like Queen would like someone like him, right? But it's like, Zhao Mi's like, no, no, no. Obviously, he's someone from like a prominent family. They kept mentioning their families during the whole meal. So she's like, I knew something was up. So it's got to be an arranged marriage thing. But for her, it's kind of like, oh, I was worried for nothing. Because now like Tian's definitely going to be mine. Like him coming into the picture is going to muddy the water between Queen and uh tian so it just leaves more room for me to swoop in you know uh it's so sad because she's focusing on what she's getting out of the deal it's like once again you and how are supposed to be a team of hey let's um be in this together but it's like how made it clear like i guess it's like she hasn't given up but neither has he but he's willing to stay in the like friendship the friend zone just for the purposes of eventually maybe she'll turn around and notice me there's that whole thing right uh, I even love later on Xiaomi does the whole like mirror mirror on the wall and it's like yeah like you know um, of course like Tian's gonna like you better because it's like bringing up the whole thing of yeah him and Queen live in different worlds she's from a like powerful family I come from an ordinary family so me and Tian like he won't have to that is sadly like Xiaomi is it like hits the nail on the uh, board with that because it is a concern of Tian's of like yeah we are from two different worlds we're similar in some capacity but it's still the thing of she comes from this very powerful prominent family I come from like very meager background and whereas like you know um, 
Xiaomi's in the same boat of just I, I come from a regular background so he won't have to feel that awkwardness or that pressure like dating someone like her and also it's like yes uh uh Fong Yu is pretty I mean no she, yeah she's beautiful but I'm cuter though she do it, but she does bring up the point of I am sh on a shorter side though don't really have a uh, a means around that but you know your short her shortness adds to her cuteness you know too so uh whether that's um I think, I mean, it just might be, like, the actress. I wonder if she just on the, like, natural, like, is she just, like, very, I'm, I'm, I'm curious if the actress who plays Xiaomi is just advertised or is she on the shorter side? Because, like, that, the actress who plays Queen might just be, like, mm, very above average. Because she's, because I'm looking at her, like, she seems pretty tall. So, either, because also the ones getting the average heights obviously vary from country to country and stuff like that. So, either way. But I just know, like, Dao Dao, like, even in a webtoon, was always on the shorter side. So they probably specifically hired an actress that might be on the somewhat shorter side, especially in comparison to Queen. Either way, um, yeah. But circling over to Hal really quickly, I do love that his mom set up that whole thing kind of for nothing. Because the whole point was, like, there's like, oh, this is, we got all these people from, like, the different stalls around. We're gathered for, like, a 15-year anniversary. And the winner of this lottery gets a trip to Macau. I'm like, okay, so, like, how long are you going to keep up the bit? And once we did it the first time around, I was like, what, you're going for round two? It's like, well, you got to, are you going to keep going until you draw your own son's name? I thought that would be an issue. But it's like, turns out everyone's in on the bit. Okay, because the first guy was like, oh, yeah, I, I have hemorrhoids. I can't be sitting on a plane. Give it to someone else. And I love that she's with, uh, Hal's mom is whispering to the lady. It's like, I thought you froze the one that's supposed to have Hal's name on it. It's like, yeah, but it's hot, so it most likely melted by now. I'm like, I love it. But the second woman was just like, how about we speed this up? And she's like, why don't we give it to the youngest person here? How? And it's just like, yeah, he gets to go to Macau and everything. And he's like, don't worry, guys. I'm going to do this for you. I'm like, okay, so like I said, everyone was in on the bit. But I was curious. I'm like, you're not going to keep going until you actually draw his name. Like, come on. But it's like, nah, the second lady saved us time being like, no, let's just give it to the youngest person here. Because she's like, yeah, I'm about to have my, like, I, I think she either said she's pregnant with her second child or about to have her second child so it's like, or just had her second child and she can't be on a plane right now to macau so but i thought that was so once again just showing like i knew his mom would come through because his mom's dope and but the fact is that she like set up all of this and it's like i don't i think how gets it because he thanks everyone so it's like no uh like he knows like his mom like set all this up they probably all pitch their money together to make this possible because it helps them my like, business wise sure by having him kind of represent the different stalls here but also it's like right he wants to go and he wants to have fun and you know once again the one person in a group that didn't get to go i would almost wondered if this was supposed to be like almost a replacement for the trip that happens later in the webtoon i mean i guess it's it's interesting how it's divided up because technically the webtoon is two seasons and the trip they take happens like at the tail end, at the very end of season one. Even though like season one's like much longer, because like season two's only like what? It's like what seventy chapters only, whereas like the first chapter is like a hundred and ninety or something like that. Maybe like it's 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 not split down the middle. It's not even. So that almost made me go like, oh, I just think it's interesting that technically like, it is technically two seasons, even though you wouldn't really think it is. Just how like unevenly divided the both seasons are but anyway that's just a th 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 my point is that trip will probably still happen later on but like i said just like the storytelling lies like the events and stuff like that where things are once again we still haven't even had the finals yet so um i'm just i'm just curious to see once again because there's also like plenty of story event things they have not bothered adapting because they probably won't adapt them at all so uh, like I said, we'll, we'll have to wait to see like how the final situation play out and see where the story kind of goes from there. But that's why I was like, I'm curious, is this supposed to, rep the Macau trip, is this supposed to replace the trip from later on in a series or is that still happening? That's what, what I, I was kind of positing and stuff like that. But either way. Circling over to Tien, who has been like the whole shi Wei thing has been weighing on him it's just kind of like right that guy's not good he doesn't really understand combat sports talk about it like that it's like yeah a guy like that like i need to warn queen about him but then he's like yeah but is it really my life to meddle in so he's going back and forth on like should he even say anything so when it comes time to say something to queen the next day he can't bring himself to say anything in fact they don't say anything to each other because she's waiting for him to respond and say something but he can't bring himself to say anything because he's like right i am a bit jealous i am a little upset but i'm also like do i really have a right to be you know you know he might be a tool bag but still so yanan comes in does her thing 
and tries to nudge them in the right direction. And even Queen's like, yo, like the thing is, if you keep smashing on a keyboard too much, you're going to break it. Kind of saying like, yo, don't push Tian too much. You're going to probably like ruin things if you keep like trying so hard. But ultimately, Tian's like, right, you don't want to be with that guy. He's not a good guy. Because it's like, right, do you like him? And she's like, no. I mean, I don't not like, it's not that I like him, but it's like, I don't not like him. I like him. I'm, I'm definitely feel better about him now than I did before. Once again, trying to take Yanan's advice of like making it seem like, yeah, I'm desirable by other people. So to kind of push Tian, but he's like, no, he's not a good guy. He's not a good match. He's like, then who is? And he's like, there is someone, I think there is someone who is, who understands you and will stand by your side and protect you. And she's like, who is that? And he's like, I think, and all he can do is remember, like, their circumstances of, like, right, he had that chip mug. That's all he can think about in that moment of just, like, right, you know, we come from different worlds. That guy at least lives in the same world. So he's not a good guy, but it's like, am I really, am I right? Is it right for me to even say my feelings in this moment? And she, he's just like, I think you'll find that person someday and walks away. He doesn't take the time. I still gotta give him props for even shit talking Shi Wei, even saying that. Once again, I had brought this up last episode that. The difference between this and the webtoon. Only we as the readers recognize how much of a douchebag the fiancé character is in the webtoon. Like, uh, Queen was kind of indifferent to the dude. Once again, it's just a family thing. Everyone else was kind of indifferent to him. Jegu's the only one that kind of looked at him in a positive light. But in this, like, everyone sees him kind of as a tool bag. Like, Yanan sees this situation for what it is. Queen kind of, once again, is kind of indifferent to him. It's only a family thing. But the only difference is, like, Jegu, like I said, looked at him in a more positive light. Oh, he's a good guy and everything. When once again, would constantly talk about him in a good light in front of Queen. Whereas in this, it's like, Tian knows he's a tool bag. So that just presents things a little uh, differently storytelling-wise. And it creates an interesting dynamic where he can shit talk Shi Wei by being like, he's not a good dude. He's not a good match for you, you know? But obviously, it's frustrating for Queen because it's like, and even love Yana, it's the most frustrating. It's like, oh, you two, it's like, one of you's like a popsicle and one of you's like the stick to the popsicle. It's like, why didn't you just say like, hey, I like you. Do you like me? Because if you like me, I like you too. But she's like, why? But Queen's like, why should I say anything when he wouldn't say anything? So it needs to come from him first in her in her mind. Because uh, I don't think, I, I don't think none of them know Yana nor queen none of them know the only person in the group that knows is how that tian told her like how it is so it's like she he's already made it clear to Zha, uh Zhao Mi, who knows exactly who it is that he's talking about but he already's like yeah i like someone else no one else in the group knows that he had that conversation with Zhao Mi that he kind of turned her down they still don't know that so will that change things no because like queen still needs to hear it from him because it's still like vague enough it's like there's still that room of like do i want to put myself out there on a the ledge it's like i need to know how he feels first but either way yanan creates this hypothetical it's like hey yo so you're not one of like only two males at the school tn so let me let me lay this out for you i have a friend who um has like a suitor show up, but then her junior kind of got a little jealous of this suitor showing up. And it's like, right, like, and she's just prodding the whole situation. And I love that Queen just finally, it's like, right, do you think this friend of mine likes him or, or likes her or not? And then like Queen knocks her out. I love it because that's a bit straight out of the webtoon. It happens like, I think maybe three times but that exact situation of queen knocking her out and then taking her away the only difference is because once again moon young in the in the web to moon young rides a bike so what happens is queen knocks her out puts her on the back of the bike and gets on the bike it's like see you later jegu and just like takes off in this case she just knocked her out be like oh she had a uh, food poisoning and uh, from the seafood it got to her head grabs her and runs off but then, like, both of them have different perspectives on that situation later on. Because, like, Queen's like, if I hadn't interrupted Yanan, what would what would Tian have said? And Tian's thinking, if Yanan hadn't interfered, would I have admitted that I was jealous? You know, it's like, you know. And at the same time, both of them staring at the picture from the theme park last episode slash the episode before. But it's like, yeah, the picture they took together, you know. And the sad thing is, uh, the family situation uh, complicates for... Uh, queen because the date for her to go to Dubai has been moved up and now it means she can't go to the Macau trip 
which obviously her brother tries to say like, yo, like the Hong Kong thing isn't that serious, so I can go to Dubai in my sister's stead. But for him, it's like, no, this is the deal. This is how it goes. But you know, at the end of the day, Queen is like, right, I, I might have made that promise. I just didn't want to break it, but I understand. It's like, you would think that would also matter too, because it's also about your prior obligations. It's like, I would, I mean, once again, I don't know, maybe it might also be a cultural thing, but you would, you would assume from the perspective of her keeping her promise to her school is important because like, what, how, like, I get it. It's like, none of that really matters. It's a combat sport school. That doesn't matter. What matters is like what you do in the long run. Like you, you the business, the family business is what matters most. So, but it's also still like her obligations as to be a good student and hold up her obligations because her obligation for Macau, yes, the Dubai thing came up first, but it was specifically set for a different time and she had another obligation here but for him it's like the obligation to Dubai is the greater obligation because for one it was set first and it's more important because it's like yeah this like Macau stuff for school like yeah that's trivial in comparison to the business it's like once again it's like he's so stubborn and refuses to like move an inch when it comes to this whole situation so Queen just has to falter so it's just kind of like right she can't go Jamie's happy about it because it's like yeah like this trip is going to be about her and Tian. I love the exact phrasing of "I'm going to eat, I'm going to devour him whole." It's like, yo, it's like I'm going to eat him up. It's like, wow. It's like I'm going to finally have him all to myself. So, it's going to be interesting to see how that gets handled. Like, you you can assume like Queen will be able to make it, but like the question then becomes like, how will they skew that situation? Like, will Tian talk to her grandfather? Which I'm leaning more towards maybe that being a possibility, but that might be something that kind of happens later on. Or just because webtoon related stuff, or 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 like how they get around that. We'll, we'll see. Because we only saw like the Xiaomi and Hao talking about it. Because Hao's like, right, even if I like, even if like Queen doesn't look at me that way, still being able to kind of hang out with her and take a whole bunch of photos with her, I'd be happy about that, even if it's in a friendship type of way. So once again, Xiaomi's on We haven't really gotten Yanan's perspective on it or Tien's, you know? Because he's, I mean, because I don't think maybe news hasn't hit him yet because he's off trying to fulfill his role as a coach. So he goes to the one person he thinks he should go to, and that's uh, Chunwa. I have to remember, if I'm not mistaken, I've talked about this before, the the scene with Hao and the director going to watch Yanan train, and it's like, right, you know, because Hao was so worried about them not doing their own training, right? That the person Jegu goes to visit in the webtoon, this conversation I think also involves him. I don't think it's Manon. I might be misremembering, but I think it's this character he goes to. Once again, this character is a very minor character. She only pops up like maybe four or five times in the entire series. Like only like, and Jegu interacts with her like maybe twice. And those times I think are the last time you ever see her in this series. Because she, to be fair, she's also like a different grade because like, Jegu is like obviously a first year just like Tien is in, in this. And like this character is, like I said, I believe she's a second year like everyone else. But yeah, the character doesn't exist in the uh, in the live action. So they gave that that conversation to Chunwa. Because like he doesn't have this conversation with, uh, like I said, I think her name's Ina, one of the guardians of the school. Like he doesn't have that conversation with her, but he has it with Chunwa in this. And she's like, right, they're very proficient, so what you need to do is, as a coach, come up with tactics of understanding their opponents. Because it's like, right, they're able to handle training on their own regards, but it's the smallest mistakes that can determine uh, victory or defeat. Because even saying, like, right, look at your opponent with Yi Chin. You were able to beat him? Because, like, if it wasn't for, like, him heavily underestimating you, he was completely off guard. So it's like stuff like that can make the biggest difference when it comes to battle. So... One of the people that's going to be coming up in the finals is going to be uh, Zhao Feng. So Tian goes to their school to watch. And obviously she's training against Yi Chen, but he's kind of like asking her to kind of go slow. But it's like no one's allowing her to kind of go all out against him. And Yi Chen's like, well, if you want to, you can get Guanyan in here. But he's got his, you know, janitorial duties. And it's like, yeah, but I'm sure he'd rather, rather do all that than his duties as captain, which Zhao Feng wasn't having that. She's like, did I tell you to talk? It's like, once again, she doesn't appreciate all of that. Because once again, she's got her complicated feelings about uh, Guanyan. But I think it's also like she kind of feels bad about him getting punished the way he is. Once he was trying to do the right thing, especially knowing Yi Chin was part of the reason why he did what he did. 
But she also is like, right, you're doing it for Yanon as well. So there's that. Which I also appreciate that Tien came to visit Guanya and got that perspective of why did he do it. Because I talked about this too during that match. In the in the webtoon, Manon never explains himself. It's just heavily implied his reasoning for doing it. But actually giving you a reason of like, right, the combat spirit of it all and what it means and how someone like Yi Chin is spoiling that and ruin like adding a bad name to it. Because he's like, Yi Chin could be a good boxer, but he's so got his own prejudiced views and stuff like that. And so it's like, not only did I want you to be able to get your revenge, he was also probably hoping Yi Chin would like finally get it. I mean, he kind of got his shit together for a little bit because he took the fight against um, Tien seriously because the moment he saw how hard Tien was training in like a month and how much he had changed, it made him go like, yo, I got to take this seriously. So he started hitting the gym seriously. So once again, just a reminder how you say it every time Guan Yan is such a good dude. Also, he's up to number 56 of reasons why he likes uh, her. Because like the last time we checked in, he got up to 25. So, um, so that was kind of nice. But also, like I said, I appreciate that. I think Jegu in the webtoon might have figured out his reasons for it, even though without him ever expressly saying it. But it's kind of nice having that moment between Tian and um, Guanyan where, like, Tian's like, oh, thank you. I understand why you did what you did. Like, I didn't know you had so many reasons for doing what you did, and I really appreciate it. I thank you for that opportunity you gave me because that meant the world to him and allowed him to grow even stronger and then allowed him to become, move beyond just even getting his revenge. How much that has helped him grow and change has kind of been a very important thing to him. So I thought that was kind of nice. Um, but obviously, like... Guanyan hears about him being coach. It's like, oh, that's a that sounds like something Yanan and them would do. So he's like, right. If you want to learn about Zhao Fang, her strengths or weaknesses, watching is fine and everything, but go, being in the ring with her directly is going to be more of an important thing. So you need to taste like that fight firsthand. So uh, Tian and her get in the ring, and then Yi Chen's over there being like, oh yeah, like he has no chance of winning, and you can tell it frustrates Guanyan because it's like, despite everything. He's still acting like the spoiled brat that he is. He had, like he was hoping that this like his loss to Tien would like smack some sense into him, but it's like, nah, he's still the same prick he is. He hasn't grown and changed. Like I said, they're they're doing a little more of that character than they did in the webtoon post, like, you know, the fight and everything. So that's where things kind of end off on that point. Another angle to this episode, just kind of a little update we have with Yanan's dad, him like contemplating everything about with um Hal's mom. It's like did I imagine it? Did she really have the seven birthmarks? I thought that was just you, like, being all loosey-goosey, my love. But now it's like, was there real validity to that? And now it's like, oh, like, is this is this for real? And he's kind of, I think, torn because it's like, oh, finding, wasn't expecting that to kind of pop up the way it is. And he's probably wondering, like, how should I handle that going forward? But it's also, he misses his, the love of his life, you know? So... That's just kind of a nice little update, and I'm curious to see where that goes, especially with, like, Yanan and Hal out of town going potentially for the Macau situation, so maybe gives them more time to connect, you know, so especially with the kids out of town, so maybe we'll get more of that in the next episode or so. And then finally, we also had Queen um, hanging out with Tian's siblings and feeding them, what was it, uh, barbecued pork over rice. And it turns out they don't get the meal that much. It's like a very special meal that they'd only get it anytime their brother would save up enough money. For, no, he'd give them their allowances and they would save up enough and eat it themselves because they can't really eat it whenever they want to for multiple reasons. One, their brother hasn't given them an allowance because I think it's just him struggling to make ends meet in a lot of ways. It's just like all the money's going towards probably like making sure they're good in other capacities. So it's like treating them in some ways like food wise like kfc and stuff like that getting them special treats but also making sure like the amenities and everything is taken care of but it's also because of the association of tn used to like it a lot but the sad thing is the day before their mom left it was the last meal they had to get so it's kind of like did she already like was that just a terrible happenstance or was she already planned she probably leaving isn't like, oh, well, it can be something you do suddenly, but it's probably something that was rummaging through the back of her mind for a while. She was debating whether to go or not, and just it was just it was finally time, and she left. It's it, it, it's it, it's back and forth between not even back and forth, but it's just both siblings' perspectives on it, where it's just like, yeah, like the reason why Tian doesn't take us is because like he 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 hates thinking about mom, but like 
Uh, his sister's like, no, it's most likely like, bro, it's just, he, he's like us. He misses mom too. And he's scared that like, if he eats that food, it's just going to be a reminder of how much he misses mom. And it gave a perspective on things for Queen because she's like, right, I thought me and Tian were in the same boat. We lost both of our parents at a young age. So this is her first time hearing about this. Like I said, I don't remember everyone's knowledge of everything in the webtoon. I want to say Tian told Dao Dao, I mean, Jegu, I'm sorry, Jegu in the webtoon, I want to say he told Dao Dao himself. I don't remember, I can't remember now if Tian's told Zhao Mi his story or not. Because I think Queen, maybe it's a different character, but I, I think Queen already knew about Jegu's circumstances because she looked into it. I don't remember him ever having that conversation directly with her about his circumstances. He kind of got into it a little bit when he apologized to her about like, right, I called you a monster. He's like, yeah, that's just because of stuff I'm dealing with, my issues like with women. Like he kind of got into it a little bit and I think he might've brought his mom up in conversation, but like, I don't think him and Queen ever had that outward conversation about his family circumstances. So... I don't think it ever really came up with Moon Young either, or Yana on it, obviously, to this purpose. But it's like, I think it's just the assumption of like, oh, his parents are dead. Once again, she still doesn't know about the dad thing, which that's going to complicate things, especially when it comes to her uncle. But it just kind of gives her a different perspective on Tian. And once again, kind of like, oh, like, I thought we were similar. We both lost her parents at a young age. It's like, he was a little older when he lost both of his parents, older than when she was when she lost her parents. But... It's a complicated circumstances of like, right, this, the complicated circumstances around your dad and how that affected your family because it led to your mom leaving. So, and a lot of that responsibility was thrust on him, which she's had a lot of responsibilities thrust upon her because of her parents' death as well. So it's, it's you know, there, like I said, there's similar worlds and also being in different worlds. It's, it's, it's a complicated situation, but she promises like, right, if you're ever hungry for barbecue pork over rice, like, just let me know. I'll buy it for you in secret. It's kind of like their promise. So I thought that was a, a, a beautiful thing. I'm sure it's also going to uh, score uh, Queen some bonus points when it comes to the, the rankings of, like, you know, who's in the lead for a potential girlfriend for Tien. So. But, yeah, some very, very interesting developments. I'm excited to ultimately see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.